everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and welcome to night four of the Spring Mini Skein Mini Series. Tonight we are going to try to mix a perfect rainbow by just starting with three primary colors from Derma Acid Dyes. I'm going to start this with a triad color mixing exercise, something that surprisingly I haven't done yet. And given the wide number of Dharma acid dyes I have in my collection, I'm surprised it's taken me this long to finally uh, do this color mixing exercise. I could probably intuit some of the ratios I need based on the triads I've done with Jacquard in the past. However, since different dye brands, even if they are the same or similar pigments, can have different potencies. It really does help to do this so that way I can have a nice feel over what ratios I need to create our final mini skein set. The goal here is to start to show that you can create such a wide range of colors with only a few dyes in your collection. You don't have to get one of everything that is offered, even if some of those uh, premix colors are a lot of fun. But now we need to decide which primaries we're gonna use. So what colors are we gonna use to mix this perfect rainbow I want to create? These 10 colors are all listed as primaries on Dharma's website. Sunflower yellow, brilliant yellow, fluorescent lemon, Caribbean blue, peacock blue, sapphire blue, fire engine red, deep magenta, fluorescent fuchsia, and true black. If I wanted to do a blue, red, yellow triangle, I would use fire engine red, peacock blue, and brilliant yellow. But I know from experience, but I know from experience that using a red and blue, to, you get deep purples, but you don't really end up with like a nice bright purple. So I'm much more inclined to do a cyan, magenta, yellow type triangle. And I'm leaving our lovely fluorescent tones out of consideration because I did use those for a color mixing exercise with frozen blue that is part of a Dye Pot Weekly episode. Dharma sells an acid dye starter kit that has these six colors. And so this also helped me narrow down the colors that I wanted to use because they are recommending Caribbean blue over either sapphire or peacock. Although it is also noted that if they're out of fire engine red, that Chinese red may be a backup color. And so this selection of colors right here really does confirm that I want to play with these three colors for our exercise today. Even though that'll give us a rainbow with a pink instead of a red. Ooh, I could do that. But uh, the fire engine red actually has like was listed as problematic at one point. There was a bit of a bad batch and I don't have much of it anymore, which is another reason why I'm gonna go for the deep magenta. Let's do the cyan yellow magenta mix. And then maybe another time we could play with it with the red. I put on my deluxe rubber respirator mask with P100 filters, safety glasses and gloves so I could measure out the dry dye powders to create our 1% stock solutions of deep magenta, brilliant yellow and Caribbean blue. A 1% stock solution is one gram of dye dissolved in 100 milliliters of liquid. And so I measured out 10 grams of each color and started dissolving it in hot tap water to bring the total volume up to one liter and then add the dye to my storage stock bottles. I am making such a large volume of each of the colors so that way we will have enough dye after we do our color mixing exercise to mix up the rainbow in the way we want to dye some mini skein sets. One note about the stock solutions, the Caribbean blue clumped into a ball, which did dissolve eventually after lots and lots and lots and lots of stirring. Uh, so this is a color that I recommend starting with a little bit of the dye and dissolving in some water at a time. So that way you can avoid a huge uh, soccer ball of dye. Why am I bothering to do a full triangle instead of just looking at the different combinations of each of the two primaries? And the main reason is that I haven't done that with these Dharma primaries yet. And even though the hues of these colors may be similar to what I did with Jacquard in the past, the relative proportions of each of the colors, the relative intensities of each of the colors isn't necessarily the same. And so therefore those three colors we get 
by mixing all three of the primaries in different proportions may be different from what we'd seen before. And it's just a helpful piece of information to understand which of these colors is the most intense, the most saturated, so then we have a better understanding to mix the colors we want moving forward. The purpose of mixing colors and doing videos like this is to show that you don't need all 80 Derma Acid Dye colors to create a really huge range of colors. Uh, you are able to mix colors to create almost anything you want with only having a limited selection. For our triangle color mixing setup, we are going to dye 10 gram mini skeins, each at a 1% depth of shade. So we're going to want 10 milliliters total of our 1% stocks to have the equivalent of 1 gram of dye per 100 grams of yarn. And we'll be doing each color as follows. We'll use 10 milliliters of yellow, then 7.5, 5, two and a half, and do that same pattern with the other colors. The blue will go 10, seven and a half, five, two and a half, and then the pink, 10, seven and a half, five, two and a half. And this setup will result in each of the containers having a total of 10 milliliters of dye. I set up 15 takeout containers that each had one cup of tap water in them, and then started adding these colors as I previously described. So we would have a total of 10 milliliters of 1% stock solution in each container. I stirred up the dye and then added 10 grams of pre-soaked yarn to each container. The yarn we're using today is Wolta Dye Forest Platinum Sock, which is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon, and I had pre-soaked this yarn overnight in just plain tap water. Once the yarn was in each container, I added one teaspoon of white vinegar so we would have the acid necessary to allow the colors to start slowly absorbing onto the yarn. On second thought, let's add a second teaspoon of vinegar to each of our samples, just so that way there's enough acid. I've never actually looked at Caribbean Blue at a 1% depth of shade, and in it is its glorious, beautiful blueness. I'm a wee bit nervous about how it will do. I have used Deep Magenta at a 1% depth of shade, and that has worked pretty well. Well, I think that this is a beautiful, beautiful triangle. When I first mixed the colors, I thought the triangle was gonna be very blue heavy. And it definitely does lean blue and pink because I mean the yellow, poor yellow. <laughs> yellow is never gonna be the strongest because if it's too strong, then it turns orange. But I am really liking the shades we have. And in fact, this one feels pretty red right here. And this one is more of a true blue versus a turquoise, which is something that I've learned from these color mixing. If you take blue and add a little bit of pink to it, you get that deeper Crayola blue color before you head into the purple realms. Now to set these colors, we are gonna start with a cool that approach, which means I am going to let this sit at room temperature for a couple of days just to try to allow the colors to absorb. And with many, many colors of acid dyes, this works well. And then we will steam set the colors after. Now it's possible that some of the colors, and I'm looking at you blue, may not absorb completely. And if that is the case, we can steam the yarn directly in these containers, but this is some good information about all of these colors that I will be happy to have when we go about uh, creating some rainbow sets using these three colors as our starting point. And as for these midpoint colors, we have a beautiful sort of mossy forest green, a muted purple, and then like a muted oceany blue color that are all gorgeous. And Okay, this really does show everything is leaning more blue because all of these colors in the middle are blue leaning. But anyway, I am gonna put some lids on all of these containers, set them aside for a couple of days, and then we'll be ready to heat set the colors. It's been two days and I have a feeling that we're still gonna see some blue in there. The colors on the lids don't necessarily mean anything because if a drop was up there when we set this up, then that'll still be there now. But let's take a look at the yarn. Here we have all of our colors, and I actually think it's pretty interesting how now 
Uh, this triangle right here feels really deep and everything else feels more a lot more bright But let's take a look at our primary colors to see yeah We still have some like a reasonable amount of blue here in the water It's not bad. There's a lot in here, but that would be a risk for some color transfer potentially I'm not sure how Caribbean blue does as a standalone color at a 1% depth of shade. There's even a hint of yellow in here. Since it is the middle of winter, uh, and there's a little hint of pink. Since it is the middle of winter here, uh, things aren't getting heat as we're waiting a long time. Uh, my kitchen is pretty chilly even. So we do have a choice where we could try to go set the color with the yarn in these individual containers. Um, or we could try to just steam set them as is. I'm checking, oh funny, that one has more green um, washed in. I'm just sort of checking to get a feeling of how much, oh, that's, this one is a broken blue and purple. I see separation of the blue and purple pink hues in there. And same here, uh, that is really cool, okay. I am gonna need to think a minute. While this amount of blue is more than I would like to see, it is not enough color that it would shift the color that we see here a ton. So I'm gonna go ahead and start steam setting these minis. Ordinarily, I might start grouping them with a zip tie, but I do wanna keep the yellow by herself because I don't want there to be a color transfer. And what I'm gonna do, Let's put the yellow in, pop our grains in the basket like so, so they're not physically touching the yellow and therefore uh, we aren't likely to have any accidental transfer of color onto our yellow. And although I am less worried about these other colors, I figure we may as well try to keep things a little bit separate. Um, so I'm gonna group the purples together with a little bit of space. I'm being extra cautious, more cautious than normal, because when I did this with one of the of neon colors recently, I did see some color transfer. So I would like to avoid that if possible. Oh, this is very interesting. I would say that that one feels like a tomato red. This one feels very orange. And for these last three colors, I'm gonna group them together, uh, but I'm gonna pop them in a empty takeout container and try to put this in the center of one of the steamer baskets. Ooh, but look at those three colors. That is so cool. Um, so I'm just gonna pop that in the center and so then the minis aren't touching each other. Or at least the ones I'm worried about transfer art. And wow, this actually looks like a really pretty pastel rainbow. Huh. I did do a test, which I don't think I ever included in a video because I didn't need to, where I steam set uh, some yarn in the covered takeout containers, um, whereas this one I have open. And the containers did a really good job. Don't forget that they're often used to deliver hot soup. Um, and so that worked really well, and that is an option. However, I am curious to get these minis dry so we can play around with them to create different rainbows. I am going to steam these for 30 minutes, let them cool completely so we can wash them. And just for some reference, this one has the deepest color. If I poke in like a paper towel, you can see like a little bit, like a hint of some blue. Um, I think if I were to combine all of these together to dye some yarn, we would get something like extraordinarily pastel. Even more pastel than this yarn, which was actually dyed with rinsing out the syringes from setting this up, um, the little leftover that was in the cups that had the stock solutions, and extra from mixing the stock solutions to begin with. And so if this isn't very much color, imagine how pale this would all end up. I enjoy doing cold process uh, dyeing when I'm doing a lot of samples because it allows me to set things up and then do one batch of heat setting in a very nice controlled way. And normally this works really, really well. Now, the amount of color that's left in the containers is so little compared to our 1% depth of shade that it's not gonna shift 
that final color in a way that I would be able to perceive. So therefore, I'm okay letting that go. But I could have decided to add more acid or just let the container sit longer for a couple of days. Room temperature in my house in the winter is a lot colder than outside on a sunny day in the summer, where things may work a little bit better. <laughs> but we could also transfer samples into glass jars uh, to heat set those individually or even into a big kettle. So you do have options if not all the color that you wanted has absorbed. So certainly pastel water is not as good as having clear water after having things sit for two days, but it's way better than having like mega saturated color still. The yarn is completely cool and the container seems to be completely fine as well. So I'm gonna put all of the yarn onto a zip tie so we can wash it. All right, let's wash these minis and fingers crossed we don't see any color bleeding. Now there's only 150 grams of yarn total and we just added some clear dish soap to see how things are. And oh, I think I see a little bit of some blue coming out, which goodness, let me see. So I guess we have, of all the dye here, it's all a 1% depth of shade, but it's a third blue. Um, but that wasn't that bad. That wasn't that bright. So we can cross our fingers on this. Now, the one question I'm gonna have is when we go use this to create a rainbow, do we want like a pink to turquoise rainbow? Or do I want to use this like more actual red that we mixed from these three colors? And that is what I am leaning towards because I think that that is, well, different from some of the other sets that I've created today, but we also have the potential to do something fun with mixing our own colors here. And we could create a fun rainbow where the only color that is a primary versus a mixed color would be our yellow. So let's see, all right, I think that things are looking pretty good. I'm not seeing any other color come out in the water. So I am just going to rinse it one more time, put the yarn through my spin dryer, and then we will come back once the yarn is dry to get a look at these colors and plan out a perfect rainbow. Here is our dry set of 15 10 gram mini skeins that now we can arrange to see how are primaries mixed together? And I do have the minis from the Jacquard project that we can compare this to. Here we have our 1% depth of shade of Brilliant Yellow, Caribbean Blue, and Deep Magenta. And just to compare these to the Jacquard Bright Yellow, uh, Jacquard True Turquoise, and Jacquard Hot Fuchsia, you can see already that we're gonna have differences with our triangle here. If I wanted this triangle to be more similar to the Jacquard one I did in the past, then I would have wanted to use fluorescent fuchsia instead of deep magenta. But I wanted to use the pink that Dharma recommends in their initial kit. So this will explain some of the differences that we see between the two triangles because our magenta color that we picked is different in the two cases. The other thing I will note is that the Caribbean blue seems to be deeper than Jacquard's turquoise color. Of course, the samples of Jacquard are older and they have not been stored in a dark place, so that it is possible that there has been some amount of fading, although if I move the twist on here, it doesn't really look like that. Uh, so I would guess that, you know, it is the Caribbean blue, it feels a bit more potent to me. The yellows do feel fairly similar though. When we bring in our secondaries that were a one-to-one -one mixture between our different primaries, uh, it actually does look pretty good. This is pretty much a very violety kind of purple, but it is a purple versus a blue. The green feels pretty great, and the orange is definitely a little bit more of a tomato red than a pure orange. And so I feel like the colors weight a little bit blue, but also a little bit pink. Expanding our triangle a little bit, you can see that the proportions that we were mixing were all pretty close. 
The one where there was a little bit more of a bigger difference is in between the pink and the blue, because I think that these two colors are a little bit more matched with their intensities. But I do want to note that right here we have a more classic Crayola blue color. And with this mixture of pink with some yellow in it, this is feeling fairly red to me. Maybe it would need to be a little bit more saturated to really give a full red feel and potentially have a little bit more pink to yellow in that ratio, but it is a beautiful red. And then finally we have these three colors in the middle, all of which are gorgeous. But look at the way the colors broke on here. This is a really, really stunning color that I want to do things with this color aiming for it. The more purpley color, it's very reddish purple. Um, it is also really beautiful, as is this more mossy green. But this color is really, really exciting to me. I went back and checked the video of these jacquard colors, and the colors do feel very true to what I had seen there. Now, the main difference between the brightness of the colors that we see here and then the colors that we feel over in our Dharma triangle is that we used a deeper pink. And so that made those purples that we see that much deeper and richer in intensity. I couldn't find the physical samples where I mixed the Jacquard Brilliant Blue, Bright Yellow, and Fire Red uh, because those gave deeper colors when mixed as well, just because the colors that we started with were the same yellow, but a blue closer to this and a red closer to that. So I think that if we were to swap the Deep Magenta Float 4 Fluorescent Fuchsia, which is a primary and is, I believe, the same molecule as the Hot Fuchsia from Jacquard, we might see colors that feel brighter, more in line with what we're seeing here. But there would be some differences because our blues seem to have different intensities. And so the pinks may have different intensities as well, and that can impact the way the colors end up looking. There are, without question, those similarities to the way that the blue and yellow mixed and the types of greens that we see in between. It's really just the comparison where we bring that pink into the mix that we see more differences. Anyway, now I'm gonna go twist up these minis so we can try to plan our perfect rainbow out of these colors or think about how we may want to shift things a little bit more if the color we want is not within this spectrum. I always enjoy seeing the range of color that you can get using just three primaries. But now, if we wanted to select a quote perfect rainbow from this and started with our primaries, I would pick this orange, this green, and probably this purple um, would be the ones that I would pick. And so the reason why this exercise is helpful is that the colors that I would pick are not all 50-50 of each of the primaries. That ended up being the case when it came to our purple and our green, but our orange is a lot more yellow than pink. And had I done this just 50-50, we would have a color that felt red but not quite orange enough. And so that's one reason why it's handy to do this. Now this is a beautiful rainbow, but what if we wanted to take things in a slightly different direction. And instead of the cyan and magenta, we wanted to feel our blue that we created and our red. I think that if we were gonna swap for those colors, I could leave it as is with the secondary. So orange, I think, is still good. It's sufficiently different from that more red color. And the green is also sufficiently different from the yellow and blue. This purple is a little bit close to the blue. So I think if we were doing this, I would, it this way, I would swap out for a more pink purple color. Or maybe I would go for something in between the two of those because really these were all on the scale like this and I think that that's just a little too close. And so maybe going like that is another fantastic rainbow from three primary colors when really the only primary we have here is the yellow. If you were to look at these side by side, which would you pick? the more primary rainbow or the more mixed rainbow. 
For the purposes of today, I am more inclined to go with this set, mainly because it's different from some of the other colors I have dyed up this week. But also, I am intrigued by creating my own red feeling color and blue feeling color and wondering if these might break when we go and dye up these colors in some larger batches. And so the colors we have here are three parts magenta, one part yellow, three parts yellow, one part magenta, all yellow, one part Caribbean blue, one part yellow, three parts Caribbean blue, one part magenta, and then three parts magenta, one part Caribbean blue. Based on the six colors we picked, I created the following recipes to dye 200 grams, a 1% depth of shade of each of the colors. Using 1% stock solutions to dye 200 grams, a 1% depth of shade, we need 200 milliliters of dye total for each of the colors. And our ratios range from being 100% yellow all the way to being three parts of one color, one part another color. I used my graduated cylinders to measure out the required volumes of the Caribbean blue, deep magenta, or brilliant yellow 1% stock solutions. These are the stocks that I mixed when we did that original color mixing, and I did shake up the bottles really, really well before measuring out the colors. All right, I have not stirred up the colors, but I think pouring them did stir them a bit. And so, yeah, I think that we are really, really good with this rainbow that we created. Now, some of these colors will probably break. It looks like I'm seeing some yellow halos around the red and the orange. I'm seeing a little bit of a blue halo around the purple. And we did see breaking when we played with these colors before. So that is something that could happen and is a risk whenever you're dealing with uh, any kind of mixed color that has more than one pigment in it. Because again, our only primary color is the yellow. But now we are gonna go get ready to dye up some tonals. I pre-soaked the yarn in some plain tap water overnight. We have 20 gram mini skeins from Wool to Dye For, and the lines include Titanium Sock, Crazy 8, Platinum Decay, That Yak, and Sheila's Sparkle. And these bundles are now ready to dye. Our starting dye bath had 24 cups of water with six tablespoons of white vinegar, a ratio of two tablespoons of vinegar to eight cups of water. I brought the dye bath up to a boil, added our dye, rinsing out the cup, and then added the 200 grams of yarn into the pot, stirring the yarn a lot so that way we could get good coverage of color. Then I left the yarn in the pot for at least 30 minutes to absorb all of the color uh, with the heat just below a boil or at a light simmer. I did check in on the yarn after 20 minutes or so and if there was still a bit of color there I added four more tablespoons of white vinegar even if that meant I would need to reset the pot for the next color. If the yarn absorbed all of the color then I reused the same dye bath for the next color in the line and I started with yellow because since that is a primary, that way there wouldn't be any potential contamination in the pot from that color. If there was a little bit of residual color in the pot, I would have two options. I could let the yarn remain in the pot until it cooled completely to use all the color, or I could remove the yarn and reset the dye bath. Or if the color that I'm using is going from say a purple to a blue and there was a little bit of blue left over, it would have been okay to reuse that pot with a little bit of blue. Originally, I was only gonna film the washing of a couple colors, the red and probably the blue and maybe green, but since I filmed all of it, I decided I may as well share all of it. I waited for the yarn to be completely cool before washing them in some cool tap water with just a little bit of dish soap. And I was already really excited with that purple to see that we didn't have any color bleeding because the blues tend to be a little slower to absorb on this one. And the yellow, perfectly fine, wasn't expecting any bleeding there because I know this color strikes fast. This is a color I've used a lot. Uh, it's more the reds that I was nervous about. Of course, if you do see substantial bleeding when you are washing your yarn, what you can do is uh, 
let it sit in some water with soap for a period of time and add longer waiting in between the various rinsing stages. And if it really won't stop, you can set up a new dye bath, add your yarn to the dye bath, and if a lot of blue or pink bleeds out, sometimes I'll remove the yarn from the pot while that color is in the pot uh, and then let it cool from there because sometimes the hot water will help whatever's bleeding just come out. But our reds were good, we had no bleeding, and so now it's the green. Uh, this one, I think when I was dying, this one took one of the longest to get all the colors to set. And I see a hint of color in there, but really it's not bad. None of these were bad at all. And so I didn't need to use any of these mitigation strategies that I'm talking about right now, but I did want to share them just because I think that it's worth sharing and thinking about what to do to troubleshoot. And that's a whole reason why I show the washing stage, because sometimes things go as I expect. And I would say the majority of the time, I'm like, great, there's no bleeding. Uh, let's go ahead and just wash the yarn. Maybe a hint of bleeding with this blue, but occasionally it does bleed. And so it's always worth talking about how to play around with that. But once I finished washing the yarn, I put it through my spin dryer and hung it up to dry. Well, does this look like a classic Crayola type rainbow? Or does it look like a classic Crayola rainbow? I am thrilled. These colors are all so intense. I potentially could have dyed them in a little bit less saturated way with a lower depth of shade, but it works really, really well. I'm not sure how well it matches the prototype colors. I feel like the purple feels a little bit more blue to me than what I was expecting, but I'm not mad because I love the purple. The thing I'm happiest about is the lack of bleeding when we washed it. The blues took so long to absorb in many of these cases that I was very, very nervous, but it ended up working out great. For simplicity, we have just our DK weight bases here, but we started with those three colors, those three colors. And we created a different blue and a red instead of our magenta. The yellow, I mean, the yellow is a yellow. But as for the other colors that we had started with from our cool that, I would say the green maybe looks a little bit more blue. So does the purple. The purple feels a little bit more blue to me but the red and the orange feel very similar. It's possible that there is a little bit of a difference between doing some of the colors cold versus hot, uh, especially when it comes to this Caribbean blue, because I feel like the blues are a bit more intense in these three colors, but the spacing of them still works really, really well. But anyway, going from this to that, I am very, very happy. But anyway, now I need to go twist up all of these minis. And like this blue is so pretty and dimensional because I think that the pink struck faster. I am so, so glad I decided to go for like a more red rainbow versus the pink one. Like, I can't believe that I created like a red using magenta and yellow. Like, that is amazing. This is so pretty. Here are the five bases that we dyed up. We have Crazy 8 DK, Platinum DK, Sheila Sparkle, That Yak, and Titanium Sock. And the one base that looks different from the others really in any kind of way is our That Yak, which as you know, starts out as a deeper color compared to the other ones. And so that makes the rainbow here more muted but you still feel the difference between all the colors in a really, really good way. I would say the contrast is bigger with the red, orange, yellow than it is the green, blue, purple, because that blue and purple are so deep. The silver Stellina took on a little bit of pink. It's most notable here on the purple, maybe because we had to add a lot more acid in our situations where we had the blue, so therefore the Stellina stained a little bit. I don't notice the staining as much on the red, which had just as much pink, but also it could be that it is blending into that red a little bit more. I'm not sure. I always really enjoy color mixing, whether I am starting with primaries or doing random um, secondary tertiary colors. 
I think it is so fun to see how these colors blend together. And the more times I do these exercises, the better feel I have for these colors and how and what kind of proportions I might need to create the colors that I want. If you were to combine the results of today's video where we mix primaries to create secondary colors, and really we created our red and blue as well, with the results from last night where we took various rainbow colors and mixed them with black to create a muted rainbow, you could get the results from that video starting with what we did today. So if you had three primary colors and a black, all of a sudden you can create so many different shades and really that's kind of just what you need to get started. Certainly there's some colors that you wouldn't be able to mix, but I think a great starter set would be a good black, yellow, magenta, cyan. And then after that, I might grab a navy and probably a true red because uh, reds require so much pigment that having a true primary red is, I guess, another one that I would include in my perfect starting set. <laughs> If you're an indie dyer or aspiring indie dyer, the more you mix your own colors and blends, the more unique your colorways will be. Now, I include the recipes that I use in most of my videos in the video descriptions. There's tons of handy information down there, including links and affiliate links to the tools and equipment that I use in my videos. And I provide this information because I'm inviting you to try to replicate my results as we learn together. Please subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel and turn on notifications. We are not yet done with the spring mini skein mini series. There is one more mini skein dyeing video, then we have a bonus video which will involve full skeins and sock blanks, and then finally a vlog where I'll go a little bit behind the scenes sharing uh, some of my thoughts and extras that I was putting together for the whole SMSMS. <laughs> There are many ways that you can support the content here on the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. I have an Etsy shop filled with yarn featured in my videos, including some yarn mops and extra sets from the series. I have a Patreon and you can become a member of the YouTube channel for some fun loyalty badges and custom emotes you can use in comments and chat. You know, in the process of creating the colorways for the spring mini skin mini series this year, there are three mostly tonal types of colorways. From night one, where we looked at depth of shade of neon colors, night three, where we created shades of vibrant colors by layering them with black, and then tonight, where we started with three primaries to mix uh, our different rainbows. And so in addition to creating some really fun, pretty yarn, I hope that you appreciate the resource of the videos themselves, because I think that there is so much that we can learn from doing all these techniques. And I know I'm personally gonna refer back to these in the future uh, as I'm planning out other projects. But now, what do you think is coming up for night five? Do you have any guesses? And if you've already looked at your yarn, uh, well, you can still guess. <laughs> anyway, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and thank you so much for watching.